Hey, and welcome back. For a couple years now, I've been working my way towards starting a new series on this channel, traveling out to tour different spaces and share stories of different people involved in this large drumming community. Whether it's a drummer's practice space or recording studio, to a drum builder's workshop or a retail store, there's a lot of stories to be told about the spaces we create to uniquely suit our needs as drummers. I've always had an appreciation for these kind of stories, and the space I've created for myself is a melting pot of plenty of other spaces I've seen over the years, whether in person or online. I'm calling this series Off the Beaten Path, and I'll be releasing new episodes each month intermixed with the content I've already been releasing on my channel for years. So to kick things off with episode one, I thought it would only be fitting to start with my own studio space and give you a look behind the curtain to the backdrop to so many of the videos on my channel. I frequently get requests to do a proper studio tour video, so I hope this will satisfy those looking for that, but I'll also try to explain how and why each part of this studio came to be the way it is today. Before we dive in, I want to give a huge thank you to my friend Adam Hatton for coming over to help film this video so that I could stay in front of the camera and walk you through this space. Adam and I have spent countless hours traveling to drum shows, clinics, music stores, and hunting drums all over the state. So I knew when it came time to film this video, he'd be the perfect person to have helping me out. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you could be first to know when I upload new episodes of this series. But without any further delay, let's jump in and take a look at my personal studio and kick off this first episode of Off the Beaten Path. Hey, welcome uh, to my studio. So as you come in here, I've got this nice little landing and kind of catch all for all the equipment I use for gigging and traveling. So up here we've got the bop kit that I made and there's videos about that on the channel. I use this for almost all of my jazz gigs now and a few other things. Got the uh, tip drum, fan, lights, and as we come down here, uh, Gretsch Catalina that I use for pretty much everything else. And then a couple sets of cymbals, whether it's jazz or a louder gig. Snare drum, which is a Gretsch New Classic. Hardware, all the lightweight DW6000 stuff. And then here on the bottom, different PA equipment, uh, EV line array setup, got a couple of those. Cables, mics, there's a monitor back there. And uh, then as you come over here, I've got a couple drum heads for different bands I play in if I need to swap it out. And then it also makes nice artwork on the wall when they're not in use. And then uh, this was a fun thing I put together about a year ago, but it's just a pegboard wall that I made out of some plywood and dowels and can hold different things. Power, eye clip for your phone, microphone sticks, in-ears, wireless rig, uh, mount for my iPad, and a couple extra XLRs if I need to grab and go. I was able to kind of put this space together and make this little area after I renovated my kitchen last fall. And it serves a nice purpose and allows a space for my students to let themselves in for lessons and not be bombarded by my dogs or family or any mess upstairs. All right, so this is the kind of lounge, my desk work area in the studio. I've got this nice little area, whether I'm recording with friends or students need to come and hang before their lesson starts. And uh, they are spoiled with a 70 inch TV that I just put in here. So it also serves as a nice little home theater room when I'm not teaching. Got a couple drums here, overflow storage. Got this Gretsch round badge snare that I got last year. Uh, this old MIJ snare that I picked up last fall and is the best MIJ snare I've ever heard. So this is a shell I got from the Chicago Drum Show two years ago and still have not done anything with. A couple other shells from the drum show. Got a few of the projects I've done on the channel. This is a practice pad I built from an old Tom shell. Pancake snare I made years ago. Alcohol ink snare I did recently. And then over on the bottom, the set of concert toms I built, which hopefully I'll be adding a few more to soon. And then uh, of course, any studio wouldn't be complete without a nice coffee maker for when uh, we're getting to work on some sessions. And then I've got a mini fridge with water, coffee creamer, and some Capri Suns for my students. 
And then one of the really nice features I think about my space is I have my own dedicated bathroom down here. Not that you need to see this, but what I do love and been trying to collect stickers, whether it's from gear companies, bands I like, or you know, there's probably 30 to 40 different Sweetwater stickers throughout here. So if anybody uh, has a sticker for their band or company they wanna send me, I'm all about it. All right, so as we head over here, I've got um, one of my most expensive instruments I've ever bought, which is the Majestic Vibraphone. It's uh, three octaves, fully graduated bars. As a classical percussion major, I've spent a lot of my time studying in college playing marimba, xylophone, vibraphone, and so maybe it was seven or eight years ago now I was able to buy this, and it's a really nice tool to be able to use not just for myself, but also with my students as uh, before when I would have to work with those kind of dinky bell sets, that was just a really unenjoyable experience. Over to the desk. I built this desk myself. It's just some Ikea drawers that I got a few years ago, and this is just some five quarter inch stock pine wood. Little hutch here where I can store some camera batteries, iPad, a little uh, MIDI keyboard, and I have a small Focusrite interface kind of built in here to the desk, which runs the whole mothership here of audio. And then behind it, just like upstairs, I have another little pegboard setup I built, and this allows me to kind of adjust these shelves as needed and can hold cables, cameras, field recorders, candles, and a bunch of tools here as well, and drum keys, headphones. And then up at the top, I've got uh, one more shelf with a few different tripods and my camera slider, which I use to kind of add motion to my shots. And then uh, you make your way into the studio. Six or seven years ago now, I bought this house and this basement was just a shell of what it is now. I'll drop in some pictures so you can kind of see the before and after. I always knew I wanted to build myself my own studio to play and record and teach in, and this has really been a dream come true. The ceilings are extremely low, and I don't know if everyone kind of gets that from my videos, but I'm six feet tall and there's maybe two or three inches above me here. So what I did um, to maximize the space is I actually attached all these runners directly to the beams kind of going across the house and then all of the soundproofing and these ceiling tiles are actually nested up in those gaps to save as much space as possible since uh, it's at a premium here. So over here in the corner, I've got um, one of my jazz kits set up right now. This is the first professional level kit I ever bought for myself. It's a Gretsch New Classic from 2012 or 2013. A few years ago, I traded it away to a friend, but then maybe two or three years ago, I reached out to him and told him if he ever wanted to get rid of it, I would totally trade him back. And we worked out a deal and I'm glad to have this because I've done many recordings and traveling and playing with it. And it's a very special kit to me. Over here, we've got a bass guitar. I play a little bit of bass myself, not much, but I play a bit more bass than I do electric guitar. But we've got a Telecaster here, and then this is an acoustic guitar that was my mom's. A nice Fender Blues Junior, and a nice little Ampeg Micro VR. Okay, yeah, he's cute. I've got this uh, kind of rolling cart that I made last year with some leftover butcher block I had and some scrap wood, but I just use this to hold different things like microphones and other uh, pro audio equipment that I need for recording. But what's really nice about it is I can just kind of wheel it anywhere I need around the room with my computer. So if I'm recording at drums over here or drums over there, I quickly have a table I can work on. Next to that, we've got a keyboard world here. Up top, this is just a real cheap roll and go keys. I did buy this red keyboard because it looks more like a Nord, but for, you know, one tenth the price. And then down here, this is another one of my most prized instruments. Uh, this is a Fender Rhodes from around 1973, I believe. And I got this when I was living in Eau Claire during college. I'm really grateful to have this in my space. And then over here on top of the keyboards, we've got another little guitar amp that a friend of mine is letting me borrow that has a, a really great DI so I can avoid miking for recording in certain settings. And then up here, I've got just a little rig 
with a small 10 inch speaker and a mixer for when we're doing rehearsals or other things where we need a little volume pumped in the room. All of this is controlled here by this little power strip with individual power buttons so I can just power on what I need. And that also powers all the lights for the studios for filming. So with the flip of a switch, we're all lit up and ready to film. Over on this wall, this is just a support beam keeping the whole house up. So I didn't really have an option to move it, but I did cover it in some uh, one by sixes and added these hooks. And this is a great spot to kind of keep different things like XLR cables, headphone cables, USB power, and that sort of thing. Over here, I've kind of got a whole set of microphones that I use on a regular basis and keep set up ready to go. All right, as we come back here to the drums, I've got a whiteboard here that we use for organizing things on rehearsals, but I also use this a lot for teaching. I just added some uh, auto detailing tape here to make a little musical staff so I can write patterns and sheet music up there for my students, and that's super useful and, and helpful. As we come over here to the drums, uh, you'll see I have my Gretsch Renown kit set up. This is kind of the default kit that's set up here most times, really for teaching. And so you'll notice I have these Aquarian Super Pads on there, as well as the Zildjian Low Volume Cymbals, just to keep the wear and tear on my ears a little less when you're teaching seven to eight lessons back to back. On the bass drum, we have this quiet beater from Tama, but I can quickly swap that out for a regular beater, thanks to this great product from Lowboy that I did a video about on the channel. And uh, now you can kind of see the collection that I have assembled over the last 10 or 12 years. These are just some modular shelves I got at my local hardware store and they've worked super great for me, not only for storing drums, but as kind of a makeshift desk space when I'm back here. And then also it's a nice backdrop for most of my videos, kind of showcasing the collection. I'll walk you through a few of the snares here. Um, to start, this is a 70s Gretsch stop sign badge aluminum. There's actually a video coming out about this snare in a week or two, so there's a little teaser for the channel. Got a Gretsch 50s single tension that you've probably seen on the channel, as well as a Gretsch 60s chrome over brass. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a huge Gretsch nerd and fanboy. Ludwig Acrylite, it's set up with some wood hoops right now because I just had those around, but that's a fun drum and a classic workhorse in the studio. Oliver snare drum. This is made by a builder out of Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where I went to college. He was the drum tech for Bon Iver, which is a pretty successful band out of that area that I'm sure plenty of you have heard of. And I've got this old Ludwig, but uh, I added this badge here with one of my old logos, not as a uh, ego trip, but actually to cover up a hole where someone added a tom mount. Who adds a tom mount to a snare? I don't That's know. That's a terrible idea. I got this drum for free, so <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I don't have too much complaints about that, but when I was in high school, I sanded it down, put on a new throw off, added wood hoops, so this is probably one of my first like drum modification projects I did when I was 16. Then over here, this is a super affordable knockoff Black Beauty style drum from Drum Supply House in Nashville. And then the next one here is a Slingerland aluminum drum that I got for free from a student. His first kit was a old MIJ that they got out of someone's attic and it came with this snare. And since he no longer used it, we were able to work out a trade and he gave it to me. And then over here is this uh, 70s Ludwig Piccolo that I got from a school that I was doing some work at. 1920s Ludwig 4x14 Universal model. And then under that we have the Ludwig 14 inch marching snare that I just released a video about recently. My Packer drum. And then maybe one of my favorite drums sets of all is this 60s Gretsch Round Badge kit in Cadillac green. So another little way to kind of show my Packers fandom through my drums. And then over here, I've just got all the different percussion instruments you could ever think of. Oh, and then uh, one snare I forgot about. Wouldn't be a studio without a uh, Ludwig Superphonic. So this one's kind of just set up for me while I'm teaching lessons. And then in addition to that drum, I also use this Stanton Moore Pandero with a uh, 
cowbell bracket for a bass drum pedal so I can play along with them at the same time and, and we just share the hi-hat and it all works out great. All right, so as we come back over here, I've got even more percussion accessories. And for me, part of the challenge with having all this kind of stuff is one, keeping track of it, and then two, organizing it. So here I've just got some magnet strips from Harbor Freight, which is great for holding things like bass drum pedals or ching ring or all these little toys from stack ring percussion. And then back here, we've got uh, the Versa stack, along with a whole handful of goodies from Roots EQ and Big Fat Snare Drum. And that all continues over to here as well, with some more dampening products and more stack ring percussion and all sorts of little ways to augment your sound quickly. And then, of course, even more percussion stuff over here. Shakers, cowbells, anything you can think of. And then as we make our way to the bottom, I uh, put this cabinet together just to store cymbals. So over here, we've got a handful of different rides, all from Bosphorus and a couple old vintage pieces. And then over here, it's mostly crashes and kind of trashy cymbals. And then finally, all the way to the right, I've got some hi-hats and a handful of different splashes that I can use in all sorts of different ways. So I know it seems like I've got more than enough gear and you're probably right, but a lot of this stuff I've been collecting for 12, 15 years at this point, and plenty of it I either got for free or for a really good deal or as a barter or trade for a project or work I did with someone. So a couple other nice things is up here on the ceiling, I've got hooks that I use to kind of run cables through and then mounts I can use for cameras or microphones. This pretty much always stays set up, but just got this microphone boom set up with an XY. I can easily mic up my drums and not have to worry about camera angles with stands on the ground and everything. So over the years, I've kind of developed all these systems and little hacks to make this space work really well for me. Hopefully it'll help somebody else as they're putting their own space together. In the last year or so, I've started really collecting tambourines because every time I find one they sound totally unique and different so anytime I find one at like an old pawn shop or music store I usually pick it up and bring it back in here to throw in the mix with all the other ones I have around but it's really great to have some variety and choices depending on songs styles or even layering up multiple sounds into one track take a quick look in my storage room. I'm sure it's not perfectly tidy, but this is where I keep all the extra drums, heads, and anything you don't see in my room. But one of the things I've done over the last year is really try to organize my inventory of parts. And it seems like once people find out that I work on drums or modify or fix drums, a lot of stuff has been given to me in terms of boxes of parts or old drums that really can't be salvaged. And before throwing something away, I'll try to at least, you know, take the parts I can and save them and keep them in an organized way so that I can use them for future projects or restorations. But this is always kind of a, a work in progress, keeping this organized. Some extra hardware and stands because you can never have too many snare stands. Extra drum heads because I'm a hoarder and can't throw anything away unless it is truly broken. A bunch of old cymbals which most of these are nothing special, but again, it's always nice to have something like this around so I can loan it out to a student if they need it. Here we've got a collection of orphan drums that have either been given to me or I'll purchase really cheap through different avenues like Facebook, Marketplace, Craigslist, or Goodwill. A few projects upcoming with these, I'm sure. And then lastly, over here, I've got a nice workbench, so when it's too cold in the winter, to work in my garage, because we're in Wisconsin, I can come down here and still be pretty productive. You'll see I've got a cut off from the bass drum I cut down last year that hopefully I'll figure out something to do with, as well as a ton of hoops. A couple extra music stands, and then uh, over in this corner, aside from this guitar case, I also got pretty creative with storage and store extra mic stands just here between the studs and the drywall. It's nice and tucked out of the way and doesn't take much room or isn't too much of a pain to pull out when I need something. Now it's not really an official part of the studio, but since plenty of you guys have seen all my project videos I do, this is 
kind of the garage shop I'm working out of. Try to keep all the tools organized and visual so I can just see what I need and grab it and go. And I work out of here on this bench. I've got this router table, which is pretty specific for cutting edges on drums, but that has been a nice addition in the last year or so. And then of course, even more storage here with these lockers for anything you can imagine. I learned woodworking from my dad and he was kind of a hoarder of every scrap piece and it's always a challenge to try to use what you have and not call it quits and just throw it in the trash. And I think that's sort of my ideology with working on drums too, is try to do something with everything I have. So even if it's an old drum head from a bass drum or a cutoff from a shell that is probably no longer usable, I'll keep it around as long as I can, you know, until there's no way I can use it or until my fiance yells at me and tells me I'm taking up too much space. Thanks for checking out my space and I hope uh, you look forward to more soon of this Off the Beaten Path series.